Edo State in western Nigeria just touches the Atlantic Ocean. Here amongst its many streams lies the town of Kiribo. Mondo is home to many well-known people, athletes, politicians, and who knows who else. It is also home to a man who for the last 30 years has disrupted the peace of numerous Nigerian governments. My first glimpse of him was about a decade ago when a viral video was floating about. Fellow Nigerians, uh, we have been disrespected tonight and not given the chance and the respect we deserve by a minister who came late to an event scheduled for 6 p.m. She's coming out about an hour, 30 minutes later, trying to tell us some nonsense about there was delayed in flights. No, we are not going to take this anymore. We have been taking this line down for a long time. It's been happening since 1960. We are not going to take this anymore and we refuse. I'm in Abuja, Nigeria's strategically created capital which has been his home for nearly two years. I'm eager to learn more about the man who ran for president, the man behind Sahara Reporters. But more importantly, I'm here to find out about Omoyele Shawore. I'm a bit nervous to finally meet Sore. He granted me permission to make this film without really knowing who I am and what I'm about. We finally arrive at his location, and it was clear he based his decisions on people as I do. Instinct. Welcome, <laughs> man. You mean, uh, I don't know what it, what is the chicken place again? What's your problem? Chicken problem. Chicken problem. Okay. So this is uh, you will be African people now. I know, I know, I know. But let's we, go we, to. We stop, we stop there in the they are doing some work. And, uh, okay, okay. Wash your back. Wash your back. Check it out. The house we're in, I'm told, costs about a million naira a month. Now, other joints it's be full of activists, students, supporters of the Revolution Now movement, and passers-by wanting to pay their respects to Shawari. Everyone has made a sacrifice to be with one of the Nigerian government's most disliked citizens. In many ways, you have, you're like a figurehead you represent, and then there are people around you who have shared interests. Yes. But is there any kind of uh, maybe fear for their safety, you know, with the accessibility to? No, I mean, it's, if there's going to be any fear, it will be shared fear. Yeah. But when we started this, we decided that uh, we would not be afraid of anybody. It was, so we plunged ourselves uh, on the front lines of the struggle. In the history of uh, Nigeria, there hasn't been any struggle of this scale and dimension since about 1993 when uh, there was an annulment of the election. You know, after 1993, maybe you can say uh, 2012 when Occupied Nigeria did take place. But Occupied Nigeria didn't have a kind of uh, undertone that our own characters we were asking for a revolution to change the way things has been done in the country. Shoot me, let me die! Shoot me, let me die! Shoot me, let me die! Shoot me! I'm about to die! Shoot me! Shoot me, let me die! Shoot me, let me die! Shoot me, let me die! Shoot me! I'm about to die! Shoot me! Shoot me, let me die! In early 2012, the then president of Nigeria, Goodluck Jonathan, chose to remove the fuel subsidy. 
thereby increasing the cost of fuel for Nigeria and its 200 plus million citizens. For a people already struggling to survive, and a nation unwilling to provide basic necessities, this was a problem. Regardless of religion or ethnicity, Nigerians at home and abroad took to the streets with civil disobedience, strike action, and general unrest in numbers which hadn't been seen for decades. There were riots, and the government reacted with violence, unwilling to restore the subsidy. Even the nation's finance minister refused to go back on this decision. This civil disobedience by Nigeria's working class would eventually be known as Occupy Nigeria, borrowing from the Occupy Wall Street movement in New York months earlier. Like the NSARS riots nearly a decade later, felt as though Nigeria was on the brink of a much needed revolution. But it never came. After campaigning in the 2019 Nigerian presidential elections, Omoyele Shaware went back to activism. He would organize the August 5th protests against the government of President Buhari. Using the slogan Revolution Now, the organization would inspire millions to protest across Nigeria for a better, more transparent government. Omoyele never made it to the August 5 protests as he was arrested by the Nigerian State Security Services, who emphasized that his use of the word revolution was anti-state. The irony, however, is only a few years earlier, the current head of state would use the same word when campaigning for office. After months of campaigning and farcical court dates, Omoyele was eventually released in December 2020. I asked him about his detention and wanted to know more about the others who now support him. It wasn't the fact that the protest was taking place that was their biggest fear, but their own intelligence reports show that 80 to 85 percent of Nigerians are in support of the revolutionary change. In the, they spent over 10 billion naira just to put down a protest after I had been arrested and then detained me for over four to five months. And then uh, after I was eventually granted bail, it was into a different kind of detention because I'm being detained in Abuja. Pretty much I can't go beyond the boundaries of Abuja. And Abuja is, uh, is their capital. They control everything that goes on here. So uh, they watch us, I'm sure they trail us. But to answer your question, I don't know of anybody in our team that is afraid of the system. I have been an activist from secondary school to university days, and since after the university, I was also a labor organizer. But you know, when it got to the time to move on, because immediately when we were getting to the 2019 election, it was already sure that there was no more a country. Yet there's a need for us to do what we are supposed to do once and for all, instead of waiting endlessly. You know, many of us were dreamers while we were very young. But you know, we had woken up from that dream so early enough that we didn't even have time to sleep, not to talk of continued dreaming. And so there's a need for us to just take up action, come together and build the movement together. So the movement that brought all of us together, almost everybody have sacrificed our careers and a lot of other things. I mean, it's clear to the world that what uh, most pastors preach in church, they don't practice them. So nobody can decide for me what God says and what God did not say. I see things myself. I know how to manage my life. Because <laughs> at the point of death, a pastor will not come and save me. <laughs> so life is what comes to you, you know how to tackle it at every um, obstacle. obstacle, so. And my family, they are not really comfortable with my 
ideologies, especially taking it really practical to this extent because um, they fear for my security. They keep reminding me how DSS is coming to pick me and every other thing, how we do not have so much connections to start picking me, how I'm pitching my tent with an already successful person according to their own assumptions and all of that. Okay, so I stand to lose a lot in my community where Delta State, that's where I'm from, it's a basically PDP environment. So, you know, if I want to keep to the trajectory I have been keeping to. I know how far I would go, but this is like a kind of deviation from the norm. So personally, I never knew Baba so accommodating. But then, you know, spirit will always connect. There is no distance in the spirit. I found my way here. That's it. When you make your first posting on social media that you've met Shuwara, it's like the reaction of my parents when I first listened to Fela. Yeah, it's like, wow, you are listening to Fela, you are going to become a bad child. You know? And my father just took the cassette tape and hid it from me. This was 1977, I think, Zombie, uh, when I first heard Zombie. And I was like, I was in the village. It was amazing. I was like, wow, this man talking about soldiers when the whole world was afraid of soldiers. So I think that's the first reaction of fans. But you know, what is religious about what we do, even though we are irreligious, is that we are here for a purpose, and this is a cause. And even sometimes we preach to ourselves using Jesus Christ, Muhammad, because they are symbols of uh, other religions in the, in the system, and how they themselves came in a revolutionary fashion. You know, look at Jesus Christ, according to the Christian Bible, he came, they were expecting him to be born in a palace and be rolling around uh, in a chariot, but the first time he ever took a chariot, I think they had to go get it from yeah. someone that they, you know, was, or maybe it was Uber chariot, yeah. you know, it's just they rented it and then arranged some, you know, there was no red carpet, people just put their clothes on the floor. And um, the way he also was uh, persecuted, same way, yeah. they kept accusing him of trying to overthrow the old order. Mm. What was his crime? They say, you say you are the son of God. How dare you? So, same question they ask of us. How dare you challenge our democratically elected leader? And uh, since you are doing that, we are going to send you to jail. And they sent us to jail for months. And then they continue their farcical trial. Same false witnesses. Same thing with Mohammed. You know, he had to run away from Mecca to Medina because it was challenging. Yes. So, but that's not the basis for us to abandon our Africanness. You know, as you can see all around us, we are Africans uh, by way of the symbols we wear around our neck and um, we, are, we don't we feel are inferior. Hair, we are hair grows as well. Exactly, you know. Uh, it's, you know, the way we grow our hair, the way we live our lifestyle. Well, this is beyond any particular lifestyle. All of this is symbolism. The real revolution is in the heart, yeah. Um, and uh, in this period of revolutionary action, there are also a lot of mercenaries. Mercenaries also dress like us sometimes, you know. They profess. Tick, tick, tick the boxes. Yes, if you tick the boxes, they fit into everything, but some of them are mercenaries. It is when the action itself happens and when we face persecution or we face fire that you know who revolutionaries are and who mercenaries are. Yes. We were soon joined by Shawares' co-defendant during his detention. Now a student in the UK, Olawale Bakari, known as Mandate, told us about his ordeal at the hands of the state security services. No, no, it's protesting against home security, protesting against poor economy, protesting against you know, a lot of things that are not working in the country. So, luckily or unluckily, I was arrested. I'm detained legally for 124 days, most of which was spent in solitary confinement. Mm. So that's why I got it. No communication? No communication. I was not even given access to legal representation. I was not given access to talk to my, my family, my friends. Nobody knew where I was for about 100 days. It's been very terrifying, but here we are today now, standard going trial. She's a felony. He claim we want to overturn the government uh, with a placard and a megaphone. It's quite very funny. Yeah. 
He has 570 naira left in his wallet when he was arrested. And that kind of complicated his situation. <laughs> Because they were upset with him that how can you overthrow a government with 570 naira? What is that like in pounds? 570 naira is like, what is that? It's like less than, it's like a pound. Eh? One pound 50 pence. So they started beating him up the moment they knew he was poor. Uh, and he's still poor. He still hasn't gotten a job. Nobody will hire him after he was released. Not even at uh, Fried Chicken George, what's that place? Yeah, tasty, tasty Fried Chicken, chicken yeah. Nobody will hire him, so he has no job. So when the judge uh, asked him to be sequestered to Oshu State, the judge made no provision for his travel, so he has to come to court, traveling several days before getting to Abuja. Uh, and then when he gets to Abuja, he has no money to go back. That's why he's, he's actually stranded here. You know, they had to arrange him with me because they can't prove conspiracy without a co-conspirator. Mm -hmm. So they had to just, I, I've never met him before. They said we had a phone call, but I don't remember having a phone conversation with him, you know, because this guy really, he didn't even live in a place that had phone coverage from what I heard, you know. But they accused him of, and he was tortured in prison. They beat him up, you know. Uh, with all kinds of tools, just to get him to implicate me uh, as a co-conspirator in this, you know, uh, <laughs> this farcical claim that we are trying to overthrow the government. Since their release, Soare and Bakari have been in and out of court in Abuja, with no progress being made to their case. After two years, Numerous postponements and constant denial of the extreme bail conditions. Both Shoare and Bakari still await a fair trial. It would seem the federal government, with no real case against either man, simply want to keep Shoare close enough to watch. When evening came, Omoyele decided to take me for a walk around his new neighborhood. The comrades, of course, were not far behind. All of us sporting the orange berets of the Revolution Now movement. I don't think you need to impose anything. You just have to govern the country the way countries are governed all over the place. That is to say churches would run as non-for-profit. And if they are doing any business that is not related to the licenses given to them to run as uh, non for profit. Mm -hmm. They pay what we call a UBIT. Mm -hmm. You know, that is um, unrelated business tax, mm -hmm. which is even higher than normal taxes. So if you are a church leader and you're flying a jet, the costs will even be more in terms of taxes. Mm -hmm. And we make sure you pay to park the jet the same way you pay in Europe. Mm -hmm. So you have to decide whether you need a jet or you need to invest that money in not-for-profit purposes. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the churches are, they are profit centers. Mm -hmm. But nobody is paying profit taxes. Yeah. Most yeah. of them are not even paying taxes. Mm -hmm. That's why they love Nigeria the way it is. Mm -hmm. Most of uh, the indiscipline you get in, legal, in Nigeria is, a result, is as a result of non-enforcement of our laws. laws yeah. Nigeria, people talk about data in Nigeria. I say, well, there's no data. Nigeria is going through a process of data abuse. You know, the biometric data they take is abusive. You go to the bank, they take your biometric data. You go to, you know, phone companies, passports, national identity card, driver's license. Yeah, revolution now. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Man? How's everything now? Well done. How's everybody? Well done. Yeah, no problem, man. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Yes. We're just strolling, man. Yes. We're going to be your neighbors here for some time. Okay. Just as we are your neighbors in Abuja. Yes. Yes. Well done. No How's the work now? Very good. 
If you guys need extra hands, you know. Okay. I mean, I put your hands I wait to raise money now for the election. No, we will not, we, we not be thief now. No, 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 kind of I can do carpentry, no. you know, so that we have enough money to do the election. No, that was so, then. That was then. <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Yeah, thank you, sir. <laughs> now we're going somewhere. Oh no, we, 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 you know, it's, for me, it would be a tragedy if we waste the opportunity. Yeah. It's already there, you yeah. know. Yeah. That general acceptance across the country, mm. it was even there, likely during the election. Mm. But now, the awareness is across the country yeah. Yeah. and across yeah. the world. We have had a lot of strong men and strong governments all over the world. And no one of them have ever succeeded in defeating the people. Yeah. Yeah. So you heard about Mussolini in Italy. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Najibullah in mm -hmm. Afghanistan. Even small places like yeah. Cuba. Cuba. But it's yeah, there exactly. Cool, yeah. Absolutely. Even Nigeria here, mm -hmm. without people raising a finger, mm -hmm. we've lost a lot of bad leaders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what they say about the Bourbons mm -hmm. in, in, in France mm -hmm. during the French Revolution? They said, they learn nothing, but they also forget nothing. Omoyele is an avid runner having taken part in marathons in the US and Lagos. I decided to join him and the comrades on a light morning jog of the neighborhood. After yesterday's intense talk, I wanted to find out about Omoyele's interests. So naturally, we began with sport. Uh, you know, I, um, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I don't, I'm not into any sports, but I used to watch soccer a lot before I left Nigeria in 1999. But after I left here, I mean, there was not much soccer in the US. So the rest is like, you know, I watch sports that have popular black figures. Yeah. Like, you know, I started watching tennis because of the yes. Williams sisters. And Tiger, you know, golf because of yeah. Tiger Woods, so. But well, you're not into any one sport. I tried to understand football and baseball. For 20 years, I couldn't, it, it just didn't make sense for me. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your thing, music, you like music? I yeah, I do listen to music. Yeah, I'm, I'm big on fella. In fact, I'm looking. Where's the, the speaker? You know, because it's time to, it's time for morning devotion. Yeah. Fella, <laughs> fella Kuti. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> After recovering from this morning's run, I head back in the evening to see Omoyele. The 
turns out he doesn't live here, and so left for the night when he didn't hear from me. Omoyele advised me to talk to the other comrades in the house. I'm curious to know how they came to live here as part of his inner circle. Mm, then I was in school, my school was on strike. So his uh, media outfit came to a protest organized by my school students. So, you were involved in the protest? Yes, I was the vice president of the union then. Okay. Of the student union. And then you were involved in the campaign also? Yeah, throughout we did the campaign too. Okay. Okay, I think a week before he was arrested, he was in Abuja for a program. So we met, so, you know, we reconnected and fine. We went back to Lagos mm. the next week. I think August 3rd, mm. I heard he was arrested, so. So, I, so, does, so when you heard he was arrested? You know, when he, he was arrested then, I think on his Sunday, he was arrested on Saturday. The Sunday we heard they transferred him to Abuja, but mm. we don't know where exactly. Then he called on Monday that he wants food. He called on Monday? Yes, that he wants food okay. and something. So. so every day you are going to bring him food? Is it true you went on a hunger strike? Yes, he did. So even the food you brought in ate? Uh-uh. How did your family feel about you? Nothing. I think I got encouragement from my mom. Really? And because December, I was supposed to travel home for the festive um, period. Where, where is home? Lagos. Lagos. So my mom was like, no, you can stay, stay back. Because we didn't know they would release him 24th of December. So she was like, no, you can stay back. When the whole thing go down, then you come. Because the other two people were planning to travel. So if I should travel too, then they will be left stranded. You will stick around until the revolution is over, <laughs> or what? Sorry? Are you sticking around until the revolution? I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello. What's your background? Are you, what are you, are you studying or what are you Yeah, I'm working. Okay, I'm working. Yes. So you're taking time off work. Uh, the thing is, I, I, I'm on my own, mm. let me just say that. Mm. So I don't work for other people. Mm. Okay, so, you work for yourself? Yes. Okay. Mm. So you got involved with this from the campaigning and then? Yeah, it started from the campaigning because I wanted to actually, you know, take my country back from the oppressors. So I joined, but I was still working under somebody then. Okay. And then I wasn't having my own time to do the normal campaign um, stuff. So later on, I resigned um, around the March. I think middle of March or towards ending of the day. Since then, I've been almost available for every activities. So. Prior to August 5, I and some people were together for about five days, planning and strategizing how it, were, how it was going to be. Unfortunately for me, I was arrested in August State. But yeah, I and some other comrades led the revolution now protest in August State, and I was picked up and detained for four days. 18 of us were detained on that day. Amongst the 18, mostly students, we had a 16-year-old boy who was detained for four days. Regardless of his age, he being a minor, his health condition, no provision for food. I was fortunate to have a little amount of money with me. I was one who fended for some of them. Else, we would have been starved. After that, we began the trial for Shure. We started attending. In fact, before he was released, I traveled down to Abuja when we were having his so, uh, fundamental human rights case, then the hearing for his release, when the lawyer filed for his release. So there were, there were several trials that he was not brought to the court. And we were there, we traveled to Abuja on several occasions with comrades together until he was released and we were able to converge together with him to attend his trials together and the strategies and to keep working. Because it's not, it's not like as if all of us here are our focus are not laid on this uh, court attendance alone. All of us have several offices 
in the party and the movement, and our works have not stopped. I can tell you that, in fact, we have more, uh, uh, some of us have more resources to work more. In some countries, some countries no longer battle. This, this thing functions for malaria. Uh, they use it to kill, uh, what do they use it to kill? Mosquitoes. It's primarily for killing mosquitoes. So it's, to reduce, it's for us to reduce malaria. Manually, manually to combat malaria. If we were operating a same government, the government ought to have found a longer and lasting solution to malaria. We should not be using a, a, a racket to kill mosquitoes. At this stage in 21st century, we are using rackets to combat mosquitoes. So it's, it's, it's the condition we found ourselves. <laughs> yeah. During the August 5 protest, yes, yes. You, were, you were arrested? Yes, we were arrested um, alongside some uh, about, about 21 other criminals in the cell. Even the person that was, that was capturing the event was arrested with us. He spent about um, Two days with us there mm. before they released him. How so did they, how did they release him? What happened that they released him? Yes, just released him to his, to, to his people. Mm. You know, so we had to spend four days there. Mm. We were we were brutalized. We were brutalized. We were, you know, really? but 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 still we were not shattered. We we even protested in the cell and we, you know. What were you protesting in the cell? We protested um, about the uh, about the condition of the cell. You know, we wanted to see our lawyer, and we we are about okay. We are about shouting for okay. Release us, that we don't have any offense. And that was it. What was the condition? Uh, well, condition was um, fear. Let me say fear. But it was I mean, bad. The, the, the surroundings. Yes. We don't, have, we, don't have, we don't even have um, prevention from mosquitoes there. You know, we were, we were, we, uh, we, we, were, we don't have a toilet in the cell, so we peed inside the bucket. We, we had, we had uh, an occasion where we, we asked the newspaper man to come upstairs to our cell. So we bought the newspaper, we shared it equally, and we were, uh, we were reading it. We were, our spirit was high, we were in that spirit. So, so what happened that they finally released you? Uh, after the four days, well, um, our lawyer came. So lawyer, so somebody yeah. that was in the process contacted a lawyer, lawyer. Yeah, 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 yeah. After a lawyer four came. days, did he come initially? Yeah, he came initially. But they but told him away. They, 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 yeah. they like, hit you, beat you, and all those things. No, that was those that were in the cell. Okay. Yeah, those that were in the cell. Yeah. So. And those that were in the cell were just come up criminals or, or people. People who were, were just picked on their streets. But they were just picked on their streets. They were just picked. Some of them had terrible stories that you, you could. Yeah. And that was it. Even Fulani people were there in the cell. Uh, in Augusta? Yes. A lot of people there. So they were beating people based off just for what reason? What's the reason? Nothing. They just they, they started us. They took the uh, money and all that. So. And alongside, we, we came along with it. They, they even solidarized with us. In the end? In the end, yeah. And you're just how old? I'm 20. The next morning, I decided to work out with the men who had been protecting Omoele for the past two years. When this whole arresting happened now? What was the situation for you? Where were you? Yeah, I was at home because we were finished um, working by that time. What did they But he called me around 12, 25, uh, and he picked him up around 1, 25 because we had, we had to go out on the next morning. Uh, so they picked him up around 1, 25 a.m. So how did, what did you do immediately after? <laughs> Although I, I started calling. Yes. So I was like, wow, is this for you? So that's how it all happened. What kind of stuff did you guys see when you were doing the uh, campaigning? What kind of like security? Wow, it was very tough. I can imagine. Wow, very very tough because we went to a whole lot of states, facing all sorts of you know, you know how this election of the thing yeah. goes now in Nigeria. Yeah. It's very very rough. We go, especially when we go to um, Asaba. Was it Asaba? Uh, Delta State. 
Yeah, I guess it was. It's a bit tough. They start throwing pure stone. Mm -hmm. wow. The one we did at um, Ushudi, that one is even worse. Ushudi? Yeah. In Lagos? Yeah, very, very worse. But we thank God. I just like the fact that this man you're looking at, this shower, yeah. man, if he has the opportunity to be there, yeah. wow, he's going to do great. Yeah. yeah. And you believe he'll be? He'll yeah, be definitely. He's going to do great things. <coughs> In that position, I get the belief. Yes, he can make it, and me, I'm fully ready to sacrifice myself to do the job. I get the belief it can be that position. And uh, my own self, we, we get the trust and belief. We know it can make it. Yes. The region around Abuja leading north is surrounded by great mounds of rock-like monoliths. Great for hiking and enjoying a view of the city. Omoyele invites me to climb one with him. It became clear to me that most, if not all these people, are here by necessity. Not just because of Omoyele, but because of what the movement represents. Each one could stand on his or her own in another life. They each seem to be certain of their purpose and how that fits into a better Nigeria, a better Africa. Even though they live in the eye of the storm, Nigeria's capital, there's no telling when the day will come. But as we all collectively climb this great mound, it seems a metaphor of what togetherness can achieve. <laughs> 